Hi guys, it's Alfari from the Geek and Hermit. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different, as in I want to do a review of all the actual launches on the PC. Because obviously if anyone's played any PC games you know full well by now, you can't do anything on them anymore without having an installer or game launcher. I like controlling everything. The main one of those being Steam, obviously, which if you've played any games you've probably got it installed. Now, it kind of was a case where it's just Steam on its own for years and years and years with the odd very small one, like in competition. And really, no, never really felt like it was proper direct competition. But now, as we're coming into 2019, it's now become more of a thing where some other companies are actually starting to properly challenge Steam and some people are not liking it and stuff's kicking off on forums and whatnot so I thought I'd do a quick video just showing the ins and outs each different launcher and the pros and cons of each so I wanted to start first of all with um, well Steam did daddy of them all really let's make sure I'm actually recording my voice yes I am now Steam obviously it's been out for quite a long time uh, it originally came out back with the launch of Half-Life 2 which anyone from my generation or anyone that played games back then will have actually bought it and it's kind of weird it's Steam came bundled with that, you couldn't install Half-Life 2 without it and at the time everyone hated it and there's an uproar that you have to have all this bleeding ransomware and all that crap you have to have this installed to play that well, of course we'll just edit it up because it's Half-Life 2, you just do whatever you have to uh, and then basically that, that, that launched Steam and it became more of a thing to just keep buying games digitally and then as it kept going on a bit more games that came out physically just made you register your code to Steam and there's no point really having the disc anymore and that's been kind of how it's been for years really um, yeah and obviously because it's been going for so long there's quite a lot of features on this basically every single well almost every single game that's ever released on PC will be on Steam at some point um, majority of the AAA games that come across will be on here so it does have the largest selection currently of any of them even combined to be honest because it's just thousands and thousands which is good, consumer choice is always good and I like the fact they always do these daft sales and things okay, if you just scroll down you can just see straight off they've always got sales of some sort on now the cons of this is um, it's one of my biggest bugbears with Steam is you've got so many games and a lot of crap on here they don't curate it very well so I just out of example watch this not work now let's click an RPG which of course at the top we've got the main ones that everyone's going to have heard of and probably played but as you start looking at new and trending it's like shit probably shit probably shit and a majority of these are just like indie games asset flips or some that don't even work that bought and played and it's just it's just inundated with the things it's just thousands and thousands and thousands of games I've got nothing against indie games some of my favorite games are indie games but this just gets inundated <clears throat> I just want to find a list of I mean what's this shit there's just a lot of this creeping through uh, I think if you look at the statistics the amount of games that got launched last year it's some ridiculous amount. I mean, it's just it's like the floodgates have opened and any old bastard can launch a game on it now. And that's one of the negative things against Steam that's really putting me off it. Uh, other features it's got, obviously, everyone has your usernames. You can have your own profile, which, yeah, I'm a near automata fan. Which you can show different statistics like how many games you've got, blah, 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 average completion rate. Uh, one of my favourite things, because I'm a sad geek, I like seeing how many hours I put on certain games. And I like the way this actually does this, it puts it in order. Obviously my strategy buff right at the top. But obviously, yeah, I, just, I like the way it does that. That's one of the cool features. And of course it's got the friends list, groups and all that lot. Um, and the community as well. Behind every game is community forums, pictures, videos, so you can kind of get if you're into a game you can probably find like-minded people behind the scenes and talk to them about it and just get into it and that is really good nothing comes close to this community that Steam has yeah uh, they also have these silly things that you can earn um, cards basically uh, which every time you play a game well most games you can earn like these daft little trading card things and what these are then used for you can even sell them if you want to earn well pennies really never really get much more for it but 
you earn badges, like this for instance. I played this, uh, I've got no card drops remaining, so I'm going to have to trade for the other four that I need. Five, even I can't add. Mm. So then I have to trade with other people or buy the thing. And this is one of my biggest bugbears, because when you complete this, you'll get like maybe a profile background sort of thing, and then you get some XP. And then the XP directly relates to this, your level. Your level is completely based off those cards and nothing else. Which I think is a complete and utter waste of time because it's like I wish the levels were linked to I don't know achievements or something any amount of games you got anything really just not the bloody card thing it seems pointless even hours played I'd be happy with it being you know ranking up everything but no it's literally to buy buy cards and you get levels it just feels like buy to win not that you really win anything by getting a level up but it just irritates me. Uh, one of the good things is I do like the way it lays out the games for you if you want. You can have it like this or you can have it in a list. And I do like that. I think that's really laid out well and I enjoy that. And also one more thing that Steam has that no other one does have is this big, big picture mode. And the whole point of this big picture mode is to... They have this thing called Steam Box which you basically hook up to your PC and then you can put in your living room or downstairs or whatever. And then you can play your Steam games on your big TV, like in your living room. Can I just say, if you can hear any random snoring, it's my little pug that's next to me. I'm not going to try and edit that out. <laughs> but yeah, you can play these in the living room, and that does work well. Really don't. It does work well as long as you've got a very strong um, internet connection, otherwise it's completely pointless. So yeah, that's a quick look at Steam and the pros and cons of it. Next, I'm going to go to the Uplay, Ubisoft launcher. Now, this is the first screen you get when you go to Uplay. Uh, I must say, if you see my username and want to add me, whatever, feel free. I may be offline a bit, or if I ignore you, I'm sorry, it's because I'm editing or recording or something, usually. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the Uplay one. It's not really competition for Steam, purely because there's just it focuses mostly on, well, entirely on Ubisoft games really. So if I go straight to the store, every game that they've made will be on here. Um, I do have to say, oh, what's this loading for? And these games you can get on Steam as well, but it does work in a weird way, like if you say buy Rainbow Six Siege on Steam, it will connect to Uplay in order for you to play it through Steam. So one way or the other you're probably going to end up with this launcher. Um, there's not as many features, of course, as Steam, and of course, the, the game library is nowhere near as much as you'd imagine. The profiles are alright, it kind of does feel a little bit bare bones, like you do earn XP and level ups and stuff, but I don't really care, to be honest. I can't remember how you earn them, I think you earn them through achievements, so it's a little bit more. The main thing, though, the benefit with this, is these little gold coins you can see, you know, 675. As you play games, you unlock them by doing different things. Like, say, if you go to. I bought this, I've, I've barely even played it yet. They'll have club challenges. And then you do the challenges, you get XP, and you can unlock different things for that. And when you get the coins, what you can then do, you can buy things for your game. Like, so it's like you can buy DLC with them. And I love that idea, it's brilliant. You don't have to put real money in, you can just earn the coins from playing the game then spend the coins on the game you're playing to unlock more shit for the game you're playing. It's great, I love it, I think it's brilliant. And that's how I want DLC to be done. Do you see how many as you can bloody get? Um, and I do love the way it tracks statistics almost to the point of insanity. Um, the main thing with those coins though that I like is the fact that if you redeem 100 you will get 20% off any game you buy on this store. So it's actually incentives to actually earn the points to then spend them to actually buy games and it's such a good idea. It's just look I bought Far Cry five the other day for I think it was like nine pound odd because I used the coins on it. It's brilliant. I'm I'm quite happy with that. Obviously I've not bought anywhere near as many games on here as I have on Steam, but I quite like it. It does its job and I'm happy with it. But again, it's more of a you you'll have this installed as well as Steam. It's not a direct competitor really. Next one I want to look at is going to be the uh I didn't load up Origin did I? Where's Origin? 
Right, while that's loading up, I'm going to look at the Blizzard Launcher. Now, Blizzard Launcher. People will pretty much only have this installed if you play World of Warcraft, which I did until very recently and gave up because I got bored of the expansion. Or Overwatch probably these days as well. Oh yeah, of course, Black Ops as well. Obviously, it's not a competitor to Steam again, it's just Blizzard games you can only get through here, so if you want to play them you have to have this launcher in. So, yeah, it's, an, it's another one you're probably going to have installed. Um, profile wise, it's a bit basic, you just have a number and you can change the picture and everything. It doesn't track stats or anything. The chat does work well on this, because you can chat to people in-game while you're in a different game, as long as it's on here. So. I've had people talk to me while I'm in World of Warcraft and they're on something else, and I think that's brilliant the way that works. It's just a little bit bare bones, as you can see, and of course, uh, Blizzard Activision have lost the rights to Destiny. So, although this one will stay here, Destiny 3, or whatever the hell it's going to be called, will not appear on here, so it's even one less game on here. Um, I'm still a bit pissed at Bliz Blizzard as well for removing support for Heroes of the Storm, because that was one of my favourite games, but what's the point now? So yeah, it's another one. It's like a side thing. It's not a direct competitive Steam again. Next up, let's go Origin. Right, Origin again. It's kind of like the same as you play and Blizzard, purely this time around. It's EA games, which I know everyone whines and whines about EA, but they're trying to learn. They're getting a bit better. Um, it doesn't feel as fully functional again as Steam. The profile is a little bit more there. It's a little bit more basic. But well, at least it does have some things in there. Um, it just tracks stats and like you can unlock achievements and whatnot. Uh, and the store, if you look, is basically all EA games that they sell. So you know your Sims, your FIFA, Madden, Battlefield, <clears throat> they're all on here. Oh, apparently they sell Assassin's Creed on here as well. Didn't know that. <clears throat> the main selling point for EA, though. Well, at the moment, they're probably going to be Apex Legends, which is direct competitor to like Fortnite and Black Ops. There's been a Battle Royale game, which is free to play and is amazing, so give that a go if you're watching this. Um, they did used to give away games for free, uh, but they don't seem to be doing that anymore. God, I've not seen any for a while. But yeah, the main pull with this for me is Origin Access. If you've not heard of it, there are two layers of membership. There's a basic one and a premier one. Basic one, three ninety nine a month or twenty pounds a year, or premium one, fifteen a month or ninety quid a year. And how this works is basically you pay for it. I always pay for the, the year subscription just so I can just forget about it. And I'll scroll down. These are all the games you can play with the basic subscription. Literally, you can just download them, play them as much as you want, and then delete them. The way it works is as long as you keep your subscription going, you can you've got full access. As soon as your subscription expires, you obviously lose access. But if you just pay twenty quid, you're going to get a hell of a lot of content over the years. Because I, I just keep renewing mine. I've not even tried half of these yet. But there's just absolutely loads, and they keep updating it all the time. Now the basic one for me is an absolute no-brainer. If you're a gamer and trying to save money, like I've just got married and trying to buy a house and all that lot, I haven't really got any spare money. So this is good for being a game tart and wanting to play everything. But yeah, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. It's such a good idea. I wish more would do it. Um, so yeah, that's the, the basic one. The premium one uh, is a bit more expensive. But the way that works, any time any EA game comes out, you get it on day one. So like, as soon as Anthem comes out, you can play that. You can play Dark Side, you can play Battlefield. You get it on day one, and in some cases you get like a week before it actually comes out, just like a, as a bonus for you being a thingy member. So basically, you'll have the the basic tier is like probably a year or two older games, and then this is just everything, every absolutely everything they release straight away. I know it's, it might seem a bit dear, but for me back in my heyday when I used to buy a lot, that's nothing really, because I would have bought that on day one, which is 50 quid, I probably would have bought that on day one, and I did buy that on day one. So there's already three games that would have cost me way more than a subscription for a year. So it's up to you, it's just kind of one of those things just to bear in mind, but definitely the basic subscription, really worth it, really worth it. Next I want to look at, well I don't really want to, but I feel like I've got to cover it, is the Bethesda launcher, which of course everyone's got one now. Uh, Bethesda's going down the route of like Blizzard, uh, where you can only access certain games on here now. They started it with Fallout 76, 
which isn't on Steam and isn't anywhere, anywhere else, so this is the main reason people will install it, and probably the main reason people will then uninstall it, because it's flopped badly, um, being kind of badly supported and just being a bit shit. Uh, I've still got, I've, I own it, I've still got it installed, I keep trying it, so hopefully it'll keep working on it. But yeah, again, it's just all Bethesda games will be on here. A bit bare bones, no real profile or anything. Um, doesn't track stats from what I can see. But yeah, main reason people have it is Fallout 76. So you've already seen this branching out of different companies trying to start off their own, well, launchers really. You just kind of, the days of just having Steam for everything are starting to evaporate a little bit. The next one is my personal favourite one, but then again, it's more taste and choice really. And that's uh, GOG, or GOG Galaxy, this one. Uh, GOG is called Good Old Games, and originally when they launched, the whole idea was just literally focus on original old games that from like years past and like 90s and stuff like that, and get them working for modern machines and then sell them. And that was basically their whole premise. <clears throat> and I loved it because obviously I grew up playing crappy games on the PC. And there's absolutely tons on here, that kind of thing. Uh, let's just have a note just to go through some of the action ones. This really is probably more for the older kind of gamer, like my generation. Well, I'm saying older, I'm only 35, <coughs> I think, I'm a 36. But yeah, the focus is on older games. Some indie ones will come on here, and certain AAA games will come on here, but later on, um, like, say, Dead Space and stuff like that have come on here, but obviously they're, they're that old now. Um, the main thing with this, though, is they focus on being DRM free. So, if you don't know what that is, basically, if Steam died tomorrow, you would lose access to all your games. Obviously, it's not going to happen because Steam's like McDonald's it isn't going to go down. You might get not as massive in the pa in the future, but it's never going to go under. But say if Literally, if it did go bankrupt, you would lose access to all your games. With this one, you don't need to use GOG Galaxy to actually download your games. It's just to make it a bit more pretty for people like me that are lazy. You can just download the game separate with a standalone installer, play it, never have this on. And if you want, you can burn it to a disc, put it on an external hard drive. And it's always there. The client will always work. And you've got it. It's yours. No matter if GOG goes under or whatever. And I quite like that feeling of secureness. Not that I probably ever would... There could be that arse to back up everything, but if I ever wanted to, I can. And also the uh, flip side of that, which I quite like, is it means if I, say, were to buy a game, say like Dead Space that I bought very recently, I already own it, I just wanted it on here. If my brother wanted to play it who doesn't work and doesn't have any money, he could go on, download it and play it, even while I'm playing it. Um, not that I'd do that, because I'm not sure what the terms and conditions say. <laughs> But you can do that if you wanted to. On Steam, you have to share your account with people, which means you can then can't use the bloody thing while someone else is doing it. But on this, feel free, have at it. Obviously, the flip side of that means probably any game that comes on here is probably more prone to be nicked and shared online. But I'm all for supporting them. And if the games are selling cheap, I'll buy them just because I like pretty pictures, I like them all in one place, and it's just easy. That's, that's the way you beat piracy, just make it dead simple, dead easy and cheaper, and boom, I'll be out, that'll, you'll kill it, because you'll still have the odd person nick it, but majority of people will just buy it just so it's all there. So yeah, it, more AAA games are coming, but if you're looking for main, a lot of mainstream ones, you're probably not going to get too many on here, like these have launched in the last couple of months on here, Bioshock 1 and 2. Amazing games, but obviously not as active current. And now I want to get onto the uh, daddy of them all that's caused a lot of the problems, which is the Epic Games launcher. Which is a most recent launch one, um, and it's causing all the waves at the moment. Uh, the general idea is, if you've heard of Epic, I'm sure you will have done by now, because of a little known game called Fortnite, which you may or may not have played. But of course they've got like a money printing machine at the moment. Uh, they have started launching this as like a, a direct competitor to Steam. Obviously, it's only just launcher. It's extremely bare bones a launcher. That the profile is almost non-existent. It does have a chat function, which I've not yet tried because I've got no friends. Um, but yes, they have they have launched this and are aggressively pursuing things. And what a lot of the things 
if you look online, a lot of the uproar is they are signing exclusivity deals with people. I, I, I've not really seen it in a small print, but I think it's going to be like exclusive deals for like a year, you know, where Tomb Raider was only on the Xbox for like a year and then launched on the PlayStation. I think it's going to be stuff like that. But you've got people kicking off that obviously if they wanted it all on Steam, never going to install it. I think Division 2 signed something like that, so it'll be on the Uplay launch round on here, but not on Steam for a bit. And the biggest one is Metro Exodus, which was listed on Steam not long ago, and people were actually buying it. Um, and then they have pulled it to launch directly on here, like in an exclusivity deal. And that's one that's caused a lot of the uproar online, if you look. Uh, to be fair, anyone that actually bought it or pre-ordered it on Steam is still being honoured and they will get the key for it on Steam. It's just you can't currently go on there now and buy it. Now, while I agree I don't really like exclusivity deals, I don't mind them doing it. I can understand them doing it. Yes, I have to install another launcher, but I click a, a different button and just close it down when I'm not using it. It's not a big issue. It's not like Xbox and PlayStation where I've got to buy another £300 fucking machine for it. I install one thing, you know, just get a grip. But I can completely understand, and I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm actually in Epic Games' corner on this one, because what happens is, any game that sells on Steam, Steam takes a 25% cut. I'm sure that's what the figure I was just reading a minute ago. It takes like a 20, 25%-ish cut off the top of it, until you go over a certain amount of sales, and then they take a bit less off you. I think the sales are at 10 million or something ridiculous, though. So obviously it's all the smaller developers that lose out more. Um, whereas Epic, straight from the, the get-go, have said they are going to only charge 12%. Like a flat fee, 12% will come off any game they sell. No, and then have at it. And of course that's to get everyone pulled in and just get all new developers in. Because, I mean, as some of them might take a bit less sales, like... Obviously, Metro might not sell as much on here than it would if it launched on Steam, but if you're only losing 12%, not 25%, you don't have to hit that many sales targets to make the amount of profit you want. It's just basic economics, and while, yes, it's annoying if you want the whole series on Steam, which you can get probably eventually, what would you do if it's your company? Don't give me any of this bullshit. Oh, I'd launch it on Steam. No, you wouldn't. If you were selling a game that you thought would sell 2 million, and you're getting charged 25% or 12%, you would go for the 12% every day of the bleeding week. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm glad though as well, because it's people moaning about it being competition. I am glad Steam has finally got some competition because it's all been kind of like secondary launches. Nothing has directly competed with Steam. So Steam has got lags, haven't launched any games in years. The UI still looks kind of boring and shit like it has done for years. And Really, I want them to get their asses in gear and sort out all this crap that's getting launched on there. I love Steam, it's always going to be my main one, just so you think I'm not bashing Steam all the time. But having competition is never a bad thing. It pushes people to work harder, get better, and in the end will benefit customers, us, me, more. Because the more they try and get better, try and get us in, fine, we cop better off. Epic, what they're doing is every two weeks, you get a game for free. So at the moment, you log on between Feb 7th and 21st, you get Axiom Verge. All you got to do is click on it, click buy, buy it for nothing, it's linked to your account forever. From Feb 21st to March 7th, Fimblewee Park, which we've been looking at for a while. Come on during that period, buy it for nothing, boom. And yeah, I don't care if people want to moan about that. If they want to give me a game for free, damn fucking right, I will play it, thank you. Because uh, like, that was free, that was free. That was free, that was free, that was free, that was free, that was free. Every single thing on my library so far was free. They've just given to me. And if they want to buy my loyalty by giving me games, have at it. I don't mind. Steam doesn't give me free stuff. I'm all for it. You just think, I don't understand how people are whinging about this that much when you get free stuff. Where's the problem? Eventually, I think it will obviously get a lot better, but I, I just think... Give Epic Games a go, because for me, I don't see why it's such a big issue. It's uh, good for us, it's good for the developers, and competition is good for the market. So Steam doesn't have a stranglehold on everything. So yeah, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it guys. Let me know below what you think in the comments. And please think about subscribing. Thank you very much guys, I shall see you next time. Goodbye.